When developing video games, there are a lot of ideas which get thrown in, but never get seen in the final game. From hull levels, to textures, to enemies, there is a lot that you may not see. The most famous of these is Stop on Top, an old idea from the developers of Banjo-Kazooie which revolved around transferring data from the first game, Banjo-Kazooie, to the soon-to-be-made second game, Banjo-Tooie. The feature was never fully used, however, due to a console revision which required the player to swap carts within a second which would potentially cause the break of cartridges and consoles. That being said, the stop and swap collectibles are still accessible in both Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, even if the former requires a cheat code. This begs the question, what about the other Rareware platformer at the time, Donkey Kong 64? Does stop and swap exist in that game? It doesn't appear this way, I mean there's nothing to suggest it in the final game. Well, turns out that there may be a way to answer that question, and uncover the secrets of one of the most interesting rooms in Donkey Kong 64. Let's take a look. As discussed previously on this channel, each map in Donkey Kong 64 has a certain amount of cutscenes. There is a glitch which allows you to play cutscenes 0, 1, 7 and 8 in a map with the usage of the intro story. And back in 2014, Xcord, a glitch hunter, was going through every map in the game and documenting what cutscenes were pulled up with this glitch. At this point, it was discovered that cutscene 1 in DK's Treehouse pulled up an unused cutscene where it would zoom into a wall and warp you to crystal caves. This room in particular. In early development, a screenshot of DK's Treehouse was taken, which revealed that there used to be a Banjo-Kazooie fridge in DK's Treehouse, leading people to believe that Stop and Swap was meant to be used in DK64. It was later revealed by Isotage in 2017 that there is an additional cutscene that is meant to occur before this one in DK's Treehouse, implying that something was meant to be unlocked in this room in Crystal Caves. A few members of the community, namely myself and MarcusMan64DS, have looked over a lot of beta footage of DK64, and we have not been able to find anything that shows this room in a beta state, showing a gate or a door in this wall. What would have been on this wall is unknown, but how would you open it? Let's get back to the room in Crystal Caves for a bit. In the final game, all that most players normally see in this room is a balloon, a few coins, coloured bananas, and Chunky's Gorilla Gun Banana. As things go, this is a rather simplistic area of Crystal Caves, not too much going on. But turns out that there are a bunch of hidden inactive enemy spawners in this room. Nine to be exact. If spawned, it would spawn one clump, two Kremlings, three green claptraps, two purple claptraps, and one red claptrap. The red claptrap being an enemy that goes unused in the entire game otherwise, outside of cutscenes. Upon activating the spawners, it's clearly visible that this would be quite a challenging area to clear, a challenge which might have been rewarded a special collectible upon completion. Now, we're clearly hypothesising here, and whether these enemies would have been tied to such a collectible is unknown, but how can we say that a collectible like this exists in the first place? One of the stop and swap items present in both N64 Banjo titles is the Ice Key, a fabled key made entirely of ice. Now at the start of this video, we posed the question of whether any stop and swap items existed in DK64. So far we have proven nothing, we've only proven the existence of unused cutscenes, an unused fridge in the location of one of those cutscenes, and a lot of unused spawners. Well, turns out we can prove that the Ice Key is in Donkey Kong 64. Sort of. In the pause menu for Donkey Kong 64, we can see all the items that we have. Gone bananas, battle crowns, boss keys, medals, the Nintendo and Rareware coins, blueprints, and finally, with the help of the game shot code, the ice key. Which we already have. Now for the unfortunate side of things. That one ice key is eternally set in the game's code. There's no flag tied to this counter, and there's no object tied to the ice key. 
Additionally, there's nothing in the game to hint towards the existence of the coloured mystery eggs. The history of DK64 is always more than what meets the eye. There are a load of other beta or unused elements of Donkey Kong 64 which I haven't covered yet, from unused boss fight phases, to the test room glitch, to unused objects, to unused exits. If you want to take a look at everything in terms of unused or beta elements of the game, I suggest that you visit the cutting room floor. Link is in the description. No matter how deep we dive, there's always going to be elements that are unknown. The developers are going to strip content out of a ROM that isn't needed, leaving the full picture incomplete and the answers to our many questions fading from memory. But regardless, the stories will always go on.